to God. We welcome you and we thank you for joining us today. And we pray that you will get blessed as you listen to the message. Today, I want us to have a look at are we Simons or are we Peters in the kingdom of God? When Jesus called Simon, he was a rough diamond in the making. Now, diamonds are not originally beautiful. They need much pressure to be applied. They need much heat to be applied before the real stone comes out. The diamond still has to be cut and polished. Jesus looked at Simon the way he was, but praise God, he saw Peter the rock. He had faith that the work that had been started in, Pete, in Simon's life was going to be completed. Simon was very rough with his manner of speaking, even to the point of rebuking Jesus for needing to go to the cross. He was always the one shouting out the odds and much work had to be done on him and in his life before the Bible stopped referring to him as Simon and called him Peter. Now Simon had many faults, but in John 6:66, 6, when many of Jesus' disciples turned back and stopped following him, Simon Peter stuck it out. Amazing when Jesus asked the twelve, Do you want to leave too? Simon Peter answered in verse 68, We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. In spite of Simon Peter's many shortcomings, in Matthew 4.19, when Jesus said, Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20 says, At once they left their nets and followed him. At once. Now, my question today to myself and to everyone listening out there, when God commands us to do something, when God wants us to do something, are we prepared to at once? Or do we have to think about it? Do we have to count the cost? Do we have to work it out? Do we have to make plans before we can obey him? Now, evidently, Simon Peter had never read Proverbs 21, 23, which says, He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. Notice as well that the place for us to be tested is at home. In Psalms 102 verse 2, it says, I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with a blameless heart. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. The deeds of faithless men I hate, they will not cling to me. You see, brothers and sisters, it is easy when we are with other children of God. It is easy when we are with other sons and daughters to speak the right language, to have the right body language. But what happens when we are in the home with maybe that unsaved husband, that unsaved wife, that unsaved children, where nobody can see us, but we need to remember that God sees us. Proverbs 22 5 says, In the paths of the wicked lie thorns and snares, but he who guards his soul stays far from them. If our paths seems to be beaten down right now, 
If thorns and snares are everywhere, I want to give you a checklist. Check your soul. What are you thinking about? What are you meditating about? What is your speech like? Check them out as you do a checklist. Proverbs 22, 11 says, He who loves a pure heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king for his friend. Which king? Hallelujah, King Jesus. What about you and I? The Bible says he is the king of kings. You want to have friends? You want people to accept you? Check your speech. Now, choice of friends is very important. Proverbs 22 verses 24 and 25 says, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn his ways and get yourself ensnared. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get ensnared. So I choose to stay away from certain individuals. Are people shying away from you? Are you feeling rejected? Check your anger gauge. What is showing up on your gauge? He who conquers his anger conquers a strong enemy. Now, you and I need to be careful who we put up security for. Proverbs 22, 26 says, Do not be a man who strike hands in pledge or puts up security for debts. Verse 27 says, If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. The quickest way to lose a friendship is over money. You know, I am reminded when we were in South Africa and our son was doing his military training, I had loaned some finances to a person in the church and they had promised to pay by a certain date. Well, that date came, that date went, there was no money and the worst thing for me was that the person was acting like nothing had happened. They didn't come to me about it. They didn't say, well, I can't do it this month. I'm going to do it next month. They just acted like nothing happened. Well, my son happened to come home for a weekend and I, got, I was so upset about this that I ended up sharing with him what had happened. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, in the military, we do not lend money. We give money. Then he says, there's no hard feelings. There's no bad feelings if the person cannot afford to pay you. And this has stayed with me all these years. And I just thank you, Christoph, for sharing that with me. Right now, we might feel that there is too much wrong, too much work to be done. But because God is with us and he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us, we need not fear what is ahead of us. We need to look to the future with a certainty that he that has begun a good